the Bible is a book of covenants. And God is relational and He wants to have relationship with us. He's so serious about that relationship with you and me that He establishes it as a covenant. Meaning this is a solemn oath because God is very serious about relationship. And He keeps this covenant for a thousand generations. Meaning, look, this is a covenant that He's going to keep it. He's going to stand by this through time. Greetings and thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. It's our joy, it's our privilege always to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word. Over the last several weeks, we've been talking about covenant as seen in Scripture. Uh, we've taken time to survey some of the Old Testament understanding of covenant. Uh, we've uh, discussed the importance uh, of the blood covenant, the significance of the blood covenant. And one of the things we've emphasized is that the purpose of covenant is relationship. Uh, the kind of relationship that has friendship, that has fellowship, that has intimacy. Uh, that's the kind, that's what God is after and that's why he establishes covenant with us and he makes it possible for us uh, to have a relationship with him through which he releases his blessings and all of himself to us and in response he expects us to just be completely devoted to him and give all of ourselves back to him willingly and voluntarily uh, into his hands. Uh, we've talked about the old covenant and the new covenant. We've tried to uh, look at some of the differences uh, between the old and the new. And in this uh, telecast, which will be our last one in this series, we want to talk about the new covenant in daily living or in daily life. How do we as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, those of us who have come into this covenant with God through the work that Jesus did for us on the cross, how does this covenant affect our everyday life? In one of our earlier telecasts, we did talk about how the old covenant affected the daily lives of people who walked with an understanding of their covenant with God. And we want to build on that because uh, everything that God made available to his people under the old covenant, the, the kind of relationship they had, the dynamic of, of his influence in their lives, everyday lives, is still valid for us today. God has not changed. His heart for people has not changed. Only what God has done is He has fulfilled the one covenant and He's brought into force, He's put in place a covenant which is better, a better covenant that offers better promises and that goes after what God originally intends, which is He wants us to be able to worship Him and be able to live before Him righteously, empowered by His Spirit and by His work in our lives. And so we build upon that understanding as we uh, take some time to talk about the new covenant in everyday life. I want to begin with, uh, with two verses here that uh, show us that even as people under the new covenant, God looks at us very much the same way he saw his people under the old covenant and he, he treated them, he called them by a certain term and he calls us in a very similar way. In Titus chapter 2 and verse 14, it says about Jesus, he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works. His own special people. Very similar to what we saw God call or refer to as people under the old covenant. He said, you're going to be my special people, my special treasure. Uh, he called them that under the old covenant. Here we see the same language being used. For new covenant believers, in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Again, very similar language being used for new covenant people, as we have seen earlier under the old covenant, God called those people a royal priesthood. He said, you'll be to me a kingdom of priests. You'll be my own uh, chosen people, my own special people. 
And that's the same thing he refers to you and me as new covenant people, that we are his own special people. So when God looks at us, we as new covenant people have God's mark of ownership over our lives. We have a seal upon us that we are his own special people. And so you and I need to walk in consciousness or in awareness of the covenant that we have with God, that we are covenant people, that, that, that God is, is in a relationship with us, that he on his part will not violate. Because he's a covenant-keeping God, that's his nature. He is true to his promise to you and me. He is true to his word. Now he's saying, I just want you to believe that. On the other end, I want you to believe that I am faithful to my word to you. And I will make sure that word comes to pass. And I will not fail my covenant with you. We need to walk in the consciousness that we are his own special people. That we are in covenant with God. And as covenant people, the Bible calls us kings and priests unto God. That Bible says that Jesus Christ, has, in Revelation chapter 1, He has redeemed us by His own blood, and He has made us kings and priests unto God. Now that's very interesting because we know under the old covenant, only certain people were kings and only certain people were priests. But here we see in the new covenant, all of us, each, and each one of us, who have been washed in the blood, we have this dual role, if you will, of being kings and priests to our God. As, as a priest, I'm able to stand before God, have this relationship with God, and intercede before God. There is a, 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 a place of prayer, a place of intercession that's based on blood covenant, which we have access to as priests. We pray based on our covenant with God. We are priests unto our God. But we are also kings. As kings, we help dispense God's kingdom. We help, uh, help him carry out his rule. We are here to carry out his will and his purpose on earth. And God has authorized us to do that. He has made us heirs and joint heirs. We are kings and we are carrying out the purposes of his kingdom here on earth. We are kings and priests. So we must uh, live in that understanding. We are kings and priests to our God. I can go before God anytime to pray. And as a king, I'm here to carry out what he has called us to carry out here on earth. Now, let's talk about several things of how this new covenant affects our, our everyday life. Now, first of all, at the very, uh, to begin with, Paul makes mention of this in several of his episodes, and I'll just uh, I'll refer to one in Ephesians 4 and verse 17. He says, we no longer walk as the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. But you know, they have their understanding docket. They are alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. But we have not learned, so learned Christ. And he says, we must put off the old man and be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And we must walk in the new man, which is created in righteousness and true holiness. So as part of this new covenant, we live as new covenant people. We have a new covenant lifestyle, if you will. It's a life that is based on this new creation God has made us. And we live according uh, to uh, 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 holiness and righteousness, which is this new man that God has, ma has made us to be. So as new covenant people, we, have, we live differently. We live according to this new man which is created in righteousness and true holiness. Also, as new covenant people, we have new covenant culture. That means we look at things according uh, from God's perspective. Uh, we look at things uh, the way God sees them. And the Apostle Paul tells us to be renewed in the, in, in, our, in the spirit of our mind. He says to be renewed in our mind so that we do not conform ourselves to the patterns of this world. The way the world thinks, the way the world perceives things, the way the world lives and goes about their daily life. He says, we, are we must be renewed in our mind. And so we have a totally different perspective. And we use the word culture to talk about the values, talk about the ideals, to talk about the perspectives that we have or, or, or on life and the way we go about life. We live according to new covenant culture as new covenant people. We also have new covenant community, meaning God instructs us 
that we need to care for one another. We are care for people who are of the household of the faith. Uh, we give to one another. We walk in love. We bless each other because we are part of new covenant community. Just as we saw in the Old Testament where God told his people uh, that they were not only covenant with him, but they were also in relationship, covenant relationship with one another. They had to care for each other. Similarly, in the new covenant, there is that, uh, the call that God puts upon our lives to care for each other, to, uh, to be uh, like a family, a people of the household of faith, and to minister to each other, uh, uh, living in new uh, covenant community. But now, the question that many of us will ask is, how do we walk in the provisions and blessings of the new covenant? If the new covenant is a better covenant, which it is, and if the new covenant has a co is a covenant that has better promises, which it has, then how do we walk in the provisions and blessings of the new covenant? Like we saw uh, uh, in one of our earlier telecasts, God had promised uh, to touch the everyday life of his people, to bless them in everything they did. In other words, God was saying, look, under my co as covenant people, I'm going to put my hand of blessing on every area of your life. Can we expect that on the new covenant? Of course, because we are in a better covenant and we have better promises. And this includes God's blessing on our health and healing for our bodies, our minds, deliverance from bondages, our deliverance from oppression, victory over what the enemy would do, our triumph over every adversity that comes against us. So all of these are the blessings, a part of of covenant people, blessings for covenant people, and we should expect them. We should desire for them. In fact, we should go beyond the promises and beyond what we see taking place under the old covenant because we understand that the new covenant is a better covenant and it is based on better promises. But the big question is this, how do we walk in the provision of these blessings of the new covenant? There's one key that we see in, in, in the ministry of Jesus. And I want to highlight that for us. You know, Jesus ministered under the old covenant because uh, before he died on the cross, he could not put the new covenant into effect. So until he finished his work on the cross, he was operating under the old covenant. That means as he was ministering to the people who came to him, in and around Jerusalem and that area where he was ministering. He could only minister to them as people in covenant with God, but under the old covenant. Jesus referred to them as the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and he was focused on ministering to them. Now, on what basis did Jesus minister to them? We understand, we know, of course, that Jesus ministered under the anointing of the Holy Spirit because Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh, for God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he sent me to heal the brokenhearted and so on and so forth. But he had come as God's uh, Messiah, as the Messiah, but under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And yet, what was the one thing that Jesus expected of the people who came to him? Jesus did not question them as to saying, did you keep the law? Did you keep all the Ten Commandments? Did you, you know, do this? Did you do that? One thing that Jesus expected of the people who came to him, and the one thing that Jesus operated on was this thing called faith. Everyone who came to him, he expected them to come to him in faith. And as he ministered to people, he would ask things like this, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And when they responded, yes, he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. There was a Roman centurion who came to him. and. Uh, uh, Jesus marveled at his faith. And he said, I've never seen such great faith, not even among the house of Israel, not even among the people of Israel, the people who were in covenant with God. That was the one thing that he always looked for. We see the same thing in the life of Abraham, the forerunner of, of, of our faith. It says there in Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 6th verse, that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. And in the fourth chapter of Romans, the Apostle Paul highlights this and he says, Abraham believed God. He was a father of faith. And we, under the new covenant, must walk in the steps 
of the faith of Abraham. As believers in the new covenant, we have to do the same thing that Abraham did. We have to do the same thing that Jesus expected off of the people under the old covenant who came to him. The one thing that he asked of them was, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you have faith? The people who touched him in faith experienced the blessings that was already available to them under the old covenant, but they were able to receive it through the anointed one, through the Messiah who came under the anointing. So here's what I want to present to you and me today, that God has made available to us a better covenant that is based on better promises, that is a more glorious covenant, that has more glory available to us, that has the blessings of God in every area of our lives. All of this has been made available to us through the new covenant of Jesus Christ. But there's one thing that you and I must put before God in order to uh, receive the provision of the blessings of the new covenant. And that is this thing called faith. By faith, we receive what God makes available to us. That's why even James, when he writes in James chapter 1, he says, you know, if any of you lack wisdom, you ask of God. But he says, but let him ask in faith. But let not that man think he will receive anything of the Lord. This is the key. This is the way that you and I receive from God. It's by faith that you and I walk in the fullness of the provision of the new covenant. It's by faith that you and I receive of the blessings of the new covenant. That you believe God and say, God, I believe that what you've given to me is mine. I receive it. And then we exercise the faith that we have in our hearts. Jesus taught us how to exercise faith in God. And the Bible tells us so clearly that the way we overcome the world is by faith. So I want to present, I just want to put this out to you that as a person in the new covenant, that you walk under the blessings of God. You walk under the provision that God has made for you under the new covenant by faith. Without faith, you can be a person in covenant but not grow in that relationship that God has for you. Without faith, you can be a person in covenant with God but not walk under the blessings and under the provision of the new covenant. We lose out on that if we do not walk by faith. By faith you can receive everything God has made available to you under the new covenant. Let us learn to grow in faith. Let us learn to put our faith in God into action so that we can receive what God has made available to us and provided for us under the new covenant. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in God's Word as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders and miracles. Applications are now being accepted for the academic year starting in July 2018. We trust that this series of teaching on the covenant has enriched your life and uh, definitely we have not covered everything that is there in the scripture concerning covenant and I just hope that these uh, series of messages have uh, uh, inspired you to go and search the scriptures even further uh, and discover a lot more about covenant and how you can walk in the fullness of God's provision made for you under the new covenant. I want to take a moment to pray with us uh, before we close out this telecast. And as I pray, I want you to reach out in faith and receive from God. I remember this Canaanite woman. You know, she was a Gentile at that time in Jesus' ministry. And at that time, the covenant had not yet been opened up. The new covenant had not come into force. 
So the Gentiles were still not yet, uh, did not have access to the blessings of God. And yet by faith, she crossed the line. By faith, she reached out and received what necessarily was not available to her uh, under the old covenant, but she still received the blessing. She received healing for her daughter. She received divine, um, divine intervention in her situation. How much more you and I were part of the new covenant than by faith we can receive. So let's pray. And I want you to believe God with me that this very moment, whatever your need is, God will do it for you. And remember, there's nothing impossible with God. We just need to reach out and receive by faith. Let's do it. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for those watching. I thank you for the wonderful covenant you've given to us, God. And you are so faithful from your end, God to keep the words of your covenant, that you will not fail. And so, Father, right now we ask that by faith you will reach out and receive. So I pray for those watching, those listening, God, that those with sickness and disease by faith will receive healing in their bodies right now. No matter what the disease, no matter what the condition, the healing power of God, the anointing of healing flows through their bodies breaking up every yoke of sickness and disease. And in Jesus' name, I command you be healed. I command wholeness to their bodies, the breaking off of every sickness and disease off of them. Father, I pray for those who may have needs in their lives, financial needs. I pray a divine provision for their lives. I pray for shalom to come in every home and every heart and every mind of the peace of God overshadow their lives, Father. And I thank you for doing this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life to Jesus way. Many young people seeking to be trained and equipped for Christian ministry desire an opportunity for hands-on involvement in ministry, as well as interact, observe, and work alongside mature ministers. All People's Church Bangalore is offering a paid two-year ministry intern program with the opportunity for full-time employment with All People's Church upon satisfactory completion. During this two-year ministry intern program, you will attend classes from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., serve in various areas of ministry with All People's Church in Bangalore, interact with APC's pastors, staff, and ministry leaders, brochure with details about the ministry intern program, and the ministry intern application form can be downloaded from apcwo.org ministryintern.